In this film, the external maneuvers performed for a shoulder dystocia will be demonstrated. The maneuvers are shown in order from less to more invasive for mother and fetus. The maneuvers that have to be performed will be shown on a model and are alternated with images of a second fetus doll placed on the mother's abdomen on which the same maneuvers will be performed. In this way, insight will be provided into what happens internally whilst performing the maneuver. Shoulder dystocia occurs during childbirth when the anterior shoulder of the fetus, as seen here, becomes impacted behind the symphysis of the mother. Take note that during labour, slow progress in dilatation or expulsion of the fetus, head bobbing, and a turtle sign might indicate shoulder dystocia. With head bobbing, a jerking movement of the fetal head is seen as the head appears and retracts during each push. During the course of a turtle sign, the head may be delivered partially or suddenly retract back against the mother's perineum after it is born. If the head of the fetus is not delivered completely, the caregiver may assist by placing the thumb and index finger on the perineum of the mother and slide it off over the head of the fetus while looking at the perineum of the mother. Emptying the bladder of the mother with a catheter is considered to create more space in the pelvis if a shoulder dystocia is expected but may not always be performed. After the birth of the head, the neck is palpated with two fingers to check whether the umbilical cord is wrapped around the neck. Take note that if the fetal neck is tightly encircled by the umbilical cord and it cannot be freed without cutting the cord, the umbilical cord is cut only after the shoulder dystocia is resolved to prevent oxygen deprivation. For a more detailed elaboration of the management of the nuchal cord, refer to the course Management of the Nuchal Cord. During a normal delivery, when the head of the fetus is born, an external rotation of the head of about 90 degrees is visible, due to the internal rotation of the shoulders. If there is no spontaneous rotation of the neonatal head, the mother is encouraged to push to see if a rotation takes place. If rotation does not take place, the head is grasped with the fingers of both hands interlocking over the occiput of the fetal head and continuous downward traction is applied on the head towards the sacrum of the mother. In an alternative technique, the index and middle finger of the dominant hand are placed on both sides of the fetal neck. The non-dominant hand is placed on top, then, Continuous downward traction is applied towards the sacrum of the mother. Take care not to put too much traction on the head. The head should also not be rocked from side to side. This may lead to irreversible injury to the brachial plexus of the fetus and should be avoided in all births. Also take care not to apply fundal pressure in an attempt to resolve the shoulder dystocia, since this is associated with a high neonatal complication rate and could cause a uterine rupture. If the aforementioned techniques are unsuccessful, it is advised to call for additional help if available, since this is now a complicated delivery. Additional maneuvers to free the shoulders will need to be performed. To allow for easier access to the vagina, the end of the bed is removed. Take note that if only a normal bed is available, the mother may be rotated 90 degrees in order to achieve the same effect. Take note that the buttocks of the mother are right at the end of the bed. The McRoberts manoeuvre is an effective and non-invasive manoeuvre and should therefore be performed first. The mother is laid flat and any pillows are removed from under her back. Extreme flexion and abduction is applied to the hips of the mother by extending and bending her legs. The extreme flexion will enlarge the entrance to the pelvis. During this manoeuvre, continuous downward traction is applied on the head of the fetus towards the sacrum of the mother. If the anterior shoulder is not released with the McRoberts maneuver, suprapubic pressure should be attempted.
For the suprapubic pressure, the fingers of both hands are interlocked with the palmar side of the dominant hand on top of the dorsal side of the non-dominant hand. The hands are placed superior to the maternal symphysis pubis and ipsilateral to the side where the fetal back is positioned. Pressure is then applied in a downward and lateral direction in an attempt to rotate the shoulders to the 3 and 9 o'clock position. There is no clear difference in efficacy between a rocking movement and continuous pressure. During the manoeuvre, the head of the foetus is mildly bent towards the sacrum of the mother by another healthcare professional to see whether the manoeuvre has been successful. Take care to instruct the mother not to push during the suprapubic pressure as this may exacerbate impaction of the shoulders.